These are the plaintiffs, Danielle Gill and Jahat Kobos. Danielle says she bought a car from the defendant for her boyfriend, Jahat. The defendant told her the car was in perfect condition and even took her to his mechanic who said the car was fine. She bought the car, then brought it to her mechanic the next day, and he told her she wasted her money because the car was no good. She was grossly taken advantage of. The defendant misrepresented the car, and they're suing for the return of the $2,142.31 she's owed. This is the defendant, Gerald Hatcher. He says he and the plaintiff drove the car to a garage. A mechanic who was not affiliated with him took a look at the car and told him it was in good shape. Ten days later, the woman calls him demanding her money back because she didn't want the car any longer. Oh, honey, it doesn't work like that. She test drove the car, had it looked at by a mechanic, bought it, and it's now hers. He's accused of selling a lemon. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she was swindled by the defendant in buying a car with the help of the defendant's mechanic. But the defendant says the mechanic was on the up and up. It's the case of unpopular Let's mechanics. Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome, Danielle Gill mm -hmm. and Jahat Kobos, you are suing Gerald Hatcher for $2,142.31 for damage to your transmission. Tell me what happened. Um, I was driving down the street in Brooklyn and on May 15th, it was a Friday, and I saw the 2003 Acura had a, a for sale sign, double back, um, started looking at the car, just was walking around the car looking at it, and Gerald approached me. He told me that he was selling the car because I wanted to know why it was so cheap. It was $2,000. He said that he only was selling the car because he had just recently bought another car and he couldn't afford the insurance for two cars. And I was a little hesitant about by purchasing a vehicle, even though I liked it, because I didn't have a mechanic. He recommended a mechanic that was not too far from where we were. So we took the test drive, went a to the- A specific mechanic that was not too far from where you were? Mm -hmm. You went to that mechanic's shop? Well, we went, it was an AutoZone and- okay, AutoZone's not a shop. I mean, AutoZone is a parts place, Yeah, right? he's, he said that the mechanic, the guy that was there was his mechanic that takes care of his car. But why would you have him, his mechanic, who's his friend who takes care of his cars, Screen something for you. Well, I was just getting it because I know the demand for the car was probably high, and I didn't right. have... You have a different version of how that went down, right? Yes. What do you say happened okay. in terms Everything of... Everything making... was correct, what she said, up until when we got to AutoZone. Um, I picked any mechanic that was out there and asked him to come and look at the car. Why would anybody do that? That doesn't sound believable that a complete stranger would... What, you're saying it's a stranger? No. He's not a stranger. He's not He's a stranger you to know. me. Yes. Okay. So when you went to AutoZone, was he who you were looking for? Yes. Okay. So he now it's sounding that, a lot more like what she said. Okay. It's okay. And how that, do you know him? He always worked on my car. Okay. Now it's exactly what she said. It was your mechanic. You went out there. You looked at her, and he goes, "Yes, seal of approval. Everything's fabulous." Why would you allow that to happen? I just because my mechanic was all the way in another borough. Oh, I that's just so went, inconvenient. How inconvenient is it now? Very. Right. The problem is you wanted to buy it in a hurry because you figured it was too good to be true. And you wanted this car, right? Um, so he looked at it, the mechanic looked it over, said it was fine. We drove because it, he, the plates were still on it, obviously. When I you had were driving it, how did it feel? It felt all right. He, okay. my boyfriend Jahat, was in another location. and Who were you buying this car for, him or you? Him. Okay. Um, Gerald drove the car to Jahat's house, and I drove my car to Jahat's house. He was okay. being nice. I didn't think anything of it. Um, he took off one plate, and he told me that on Monday he was going to go to the DMV and to make sure that I went the next day so that we didn't get tickets. Um, Monday, I contacted Gerald because I finally I went to my mechanic, mm -hmm. and my mechanic said, it's a piece of mess. What was wrong with it, according to your mechanic? He said that there was a something, something with the transmission. An engine might have shifted. He said it was in a bad accident. My guy, my mechanic said it was the engine had shifted. Um, he said he would fix it if I wanted it fixed, but he didn't do an official write-up because he said about two thousand dollars, and he couldn't afford the two thousand dollars. So we went to price another place, and they Did you get the work done. 
Yes. How much did the work cost? Um, well, we had two places do it. Nine seventy nine for one, and then a thousand eighty eight for the transmission. Um, um, now, why would he have to pay for these things? Because he misled us on the bill of sale. We did a bill of sale, and he said it was in good condition. This car couldn't even pass inspections. Nobody would consider it in good condition. It's not good condition. So would you ever, 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 ever um, trust the mechanic, the seller's mechanic, uh, if you were buying a used car? Not at all. Because? Because he's probably getting kickbacks working with his friend. Wow, what if he's licensed though? It doesn't matter. You need to bring your own mechanic when any time that you buy something. I would um, agree on that as a uh, universal statement. They're going inside the courtroom. How are you different from every other used car sale where it's as is and buyer beware? I'm just it's like just taking a chance because my the first mechanic that I went to, he told us that we have 30 days to. Which he's going by. I'm just going by him because he has like 30 years experience. I don't know. Yeah, that's not the law. The law is buyer beware. Now I, I am a little uncomfortable about the fact that you. Uh, t according to you, did he tell you, I'm going to take you to my mechanic, he'll look it over, and yes. did, was he like no. trying to help you make that sale because he's your no. buddy? She can add, you can ask her, I never used the phone, I never talked to anyone. And also, as we was at AutoZone, there were other individuals that she's not mentioning, walked up and wanted to buy the car in the same time that we were there, where she stepped in and told him, no, I'm buying the car. How did they, they were know? Because they had a for sale sign? Yes, because it was written all over the car. And there's another thing I would like to add to this. When Ms. Gill took the car home, the next day she bought this bill of sale. She typed up this bill of sale. Really? And bought it the next what day. What day of the week did she buy it? A Friday. Okay, so she came on Saturday or she came on Monday? She came on Monday and on bought Monday. that day. She typed Probably up that we signed. Probably after she spoke to her mechanic? That was before. Then when you, is, when did you complain? On the Monday? That Monday. That same day? Yeah. Okay, you should owe, I mean, this is how it is by operation of law anyway. A used car sale is an as-is sale. A thir when you buy a 13, 12-year-old 12 car, you need to have it looked at by a mechanic that you're happy with. That's what you have to do. People don't do it. That's why Douglas and I are in business. Okay? Because, well, actually, the people who do do it, I just don't see. So I'm sure lots of people do it, but you didn't. Um, you thought you were going there to see his mechanic, and that's what you were happy with. Your mechanic feels like you need to do a bunch of work to it. But the bottom line is you did the work. I hope you're happy with the car after having put a little bit of money into it. I hope the car lasts you a nice long time, but nothing that I've heard would make me order him to take back the car and refund you the purchase price. I'm sorry, that's my verdict. Do you think you need to say something after that? No, thank you, thank you. And so it's another as is case here in the people's court, which it happens way too often. Uh, you understand how the verdict Came down the way it did. Yes. Right. What were your, What was your mistake in this? I should have used my mechanic first. <laughs> Always get it examined. Right. Uh, what do you think happened here? Do you think anything underhanded took place? I do. What do you I think do. happened? Um, I feel like they were working together because I don't understand why someone would say a car is in good condition when it wasn't. All right. Well, it's an expensive lesson, but hopefully the car will last you a long time now. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Around the corner, the documents are waiting for you there. All right. So step on out here. Um, you, were on, you were still talking as the judge was ruling. What was it you had left to say? No, I just wanted to let her know that I had actually just bought another car that was older than that one. I had a mechanic look at it and he said- Were you working with this guy, this mm -hmm. other mechanic you no, took it to? No, he was just a mechanic that uh, fixed my car a certain few times. That's you gave him a couple of dollars for no, the job? No. Right. He was objective? No, he's okay. Harvey. You know, a lot of people don't realize this, but when you buy a used car, everybody thinks it's automatically as is. It isn't. You can always demand a warranty. You have every right, even with a private sale, to demand a warranty and see what you get.